In this series so far, we have examined some of the forces that are exerted by interacting bodies on each other. We have also investigated the properties of inertia and momentum. Remember, these are properties of the bodies themselves. Now, some of the most common examples of bodies or objects interacting with each other that we observe in the world around us are collisions. In today's lesson, we are going to look at what happens to the momentum of the interacting bodies during a collision. So, what do you think? Will the momentum of interacting bodies increase, decrease or stay the same? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to state and apply the law of conservation of momentum. A good way of finding out what happens to the momentum of interacting bodies during a collision is to measure and compare the sum of the momentum of the bodies before and after the collision. I am sure that you'll agree that objects can collide with each other from all sorts of directions, but for the purpose of our investigation, we will limit our experiments to two bodies colliding with each other along a straight line to ensure simple and clear results. Let's have a look at the apparatus that we will use in our experiments today. Firstly, we need two identical cars that will represent our interacting bodies. Both these cars have a length of 16,5 centimeters and a mass of 250 grams. We will let the cars run on this horizontal friction compensated track. This means that the frictional force between the wheels of the cars and the track is so small that we can ignore it in our calculations. To measure the velocity of the cars accurately, we will use these nifty devices called Photogates. A photogate sends out a beam of light from one side of the gate to the other. A timer measures the time taken from the moment the beam is broken until the moment that it is restored. In other words, if we place the photogate on our track, it will measure how long it takes for the car to move through them. Now you should remember that you find the average velocity of an object using the equation velocity equals displacement divided by time taken. So if you use the length measurement of the car as the displacement during the time it takes for the beam to be restored, you can calculate the average velocity of the car at the point where the car passes through the gate. We will also attach a data logging apparatus to the photo gates. The computer software of this apparatus does the calculation I've just explained automatically and gives us the average velocity of the car as it passes through the photo gate. Now we are ready to begin experimenting. In our first experiment, we set the blue car in motion to collide with the stationary red car. It seems as if the blue car has transferred its kinetic energy to the red car during the collision. You should also have noticed that the cars separated from each other after the collision. The velocity of both cars has the same direction, from left to right. But what about the momentum of the two cars? Is it also transferred? Let's calculate the momentum of each car before and after the collision. The blue car approaches from left to right with a velocity of 0,8 meters per second and it stops after the collision. The red car was initially at rest. After the collision, the red car moves off to the right with a velocity of 0,8 meters per second. The momentum P of the car is the product of its mass and its velocity. Remember that both cars have the same mass, 250 grams or 0,25 kilograms. So, the blue car initially has a momentum of 0,25 kilogram times 0,8 meters per second, which gives a value of 0,2 kilogram meters per second. After the collision, it stops, so its velocity is zero, and so is its momentum. The red car was stationary before the collision, so its momentum before collision is zero. Its momentum after collision is its mass of 0,25 kilogram times its velocity of 0,8 meters per second, which gives a value of 0,2 kilogram meters per second. Finally, we calculate the total amount of momentum before collision and the total amount after collision. Did you notice that the total momentum of the two cars remains constant? It is the same before the collision and after the collision. When a quantity remains constant during an interaction, we say that the quantity is conserved. So we can say that during this collision between the two cars, the total momentum of the cars is conserved. 
The same type of collision occurs when a moving pool ball strikes a stationary pool ball. The first ball strikes the stationary second ball. The first ball transfers its momentum to the second ball. The total momentum of the two balls remains constant. Momentum is conserved. Let's continue our experimentation by changing some of the conditions of the collision. This time we investigate what happens to the total momentum of the cars during a head-on collision. The red car and the blue car move towards each other and collide. After they collide, they separate and move backwards along the track. Here are the values that we get from the computer for their velocities before and after the collision. Because the direction of motion changes from left to right and from right to left, we have to assign positive and negative values to the direction. Let's keep it simple. We will assign moving towards the right as motion in the positive direction. Moving to the left is therefore shown as a negative value for velocity. Now we calculate the momentum for each car and write it into the table. Again, we have to find the sum of the initial momentum, that is the momentum before the collision. Remember to take the sign of the momentum into account and then the sum of the final momentum, that is the momentum after the collision. Notice that the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Once again, we have a similar result. The total momentum of the two cars is conserved. This begs the question, is momentum always conserved in collisions? Well, we do see examples where momentum seems to be conserved in everyday life, provided that there are no other forces acting on the bodies except the force that they exert on each other. When there are no other forces acting on two interacting bodies except for the forces that they exert on each other, we say that they form an isolated system. I think we should state our observations so far as a hypothesis. In an isolated system, the total momentum of interacting bodies is conserved. To prove our hypothesis, we will look at two more types of collisions, a hit and stick collision and an explosive collision. Let's join Aaron in the lab where he has these experiments already set up. Hey there guys, look here, I have our two trusty cars set and ready to collide. Do you see that in this collision, the blue car connects with the red car and both move off together? We call this kind of collision a heat and stick collision. Once again, I measure the initial and final velocities of the cars and calculate the momentum of each car before and after the collision. Here are my results for the total initial momentum and the total final momentum of the two cars. Again, we see that the sum of the momentum before the collision is equal to the sum of their momenta after the collision. The total momentum of the system of colliding cars is conserved. Heat and stick collisions occur in many everyday situations. In each case, when the system is isolated, the sum of the initial momenta is equal to the sum of the final momenta. Momentum is transferred from one body to another. Momentum is conserved. To investigate an explosion, I've put together the two cars with a spring-loaded plunger in between them so that when I tap the trigger, it releases the spring and the cars are pushed apart. Each car moves off in a different direction. We assign motion to the right as positive and motion to the left as negative. When we add their momenta together, we find that it is zero exactly the same as the momentum before the collision. So, the total momentum of the cars is conserved even in an explosion. Back to Nelly. Do you agree that we have shown that our hypothesis is true for bodies moving in a straight line? In an isolated system, the total linear momentum of interacting bodies is conserved. This fact is known as the law of conservation of linear momentum. The term linear momentum refers to the momentum of anything moving in a straight line. Linear momentum is the product of the mass of the body and its linear velocity, hence the name linear momentum. There is another type of momentum that we can calculate in physics. It is the angular momentum of a body when it moves in a circle. But in this series of lessons, we will only be dealing with linear momentum, with bodies moving in straight lines and colliding with each other along a straight line. 
Another very important point to note at this stage is that we limit our study of collision to those collisions which take place in isolated systems. Only the interacting bodies exert forces on each other. All other forces on the bodies have no effect on their subsequent motion. Isolated systems are ideal systems with ideal conditions. This does not mean that we cannot make predictions about the momentum of interacting bodies in real-life events where there are some minimal external forces acting on the bodies, such as friction and air resistance. For example, forensic investigators on accidents with firearms make use of the law of conservation of momentum to predict where a bullet might have ended up. The bullet has a certain amount of momentum when it enters its target. This momentum is transferred to the target and the bullet leaves with less momentum. An interesting thought which we have mentioned earlier but haven't examined yet is what happens to the kinetic energy of the colliding bodies during a collision. Well, the first thing you need to know if you want to answer this question is that there is a very special mathematical relationship between kinetic energy and momentum. Remember, Kinetic energy can be calculated by using the equation half momentum multiplied by velocity. You also need to remember that we are only considering collisions which occur on a straight line and on a horizontal surface. This means that the gravitational potential energy of the colliding bodies is constant. They stay at the same level. Now let's use our equation, the readings we took for the velocity and the values we calculated for the momentum to see what happens to the kinetic energy during some of the collisions that we have investigated. In the first experiment, when the blue car hit a stationary red car, the initial kinetic energy of the two cars is equal to the final kinetic energy of the cars. It seems that kinetic energy may be conserved. Do you think that the kinetic energy will always be conserved in an isolated system of interacting bodies? In our second experiment, the blue and red cars hit each other head-on and they separate and move back along their tracks. The sum of the initial kinetic energies is equal to the sum of their final kinetic energies. They separate and no kinetic energy is lost. But the third experiment, when the cars hit and stick, give us a different result. The sum of the initial kinetic energies is greater than the sum of their final kinetic energies. Clearly, kinetic energy is not conserved in this type of collision. So what has happened to the energy? Well, energy moves from one place to another. The total amount of energy in the universe is constant, but energy appears in different places and moves from one place to another. You can also hear the cars colliding. Energy also appears as sound energy that is transferred to the air and the surroundings. No energy is lost but it has done work on the cars to change their shape during the collision, so it is no longer able to make the cars move as fast as before. We can therefore conclude that kinetic energy is not always conserved in a collision, even though linear momentum is conserved. Now it's time for your task for today. These two bumper cars collide with each other in a straight line, moving off in the same direction when they couple together. The blue car and its passenger have a mass of 200 kilograms and the red car's total mass is 250 kilograms. The initial velocity of the blue car is 4 meters per second and its final velocity is 2 meters per second. What is the initial velocity of the red car? Use the law of conservation of momentum to solve this problem. Write a paragraph on how you think the answer to the task could be useful in a real-life scenario. Physics happens all around us, every day. Scientists and engineers make use of measurements to design safer vehicles, safer roads, safer railway systems, and safer sporting equipment. Join me next time as we learn more about force and momentum so that we can understand how things work together for our benefit. Yeah.